G'day, um, it's Charlie at the Byron Bay Riders Festival here with Michael Abelman from Soul Food yep. Street. Soul Food Street, Street Farms, Farms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in Vancouver. In Vancouver, yeah. That's great. Um, Michael's in the country for a few days, a few weeks, and he's been speaking a number of times in the last couple of days about his projects over there and inspiring Aussie farmers, and not just Aussie farmers, but, but people who want to know where their food's from and urban farmers as well. Michael, can you tell me what you're doing in Vancouver? What's what's your sort of intention and how, how's it all going? Yeah, so Soul Food Street Farms is, is what we would refer to as a social enterprise, uh, which is has a primary mandate of providing a training and meaningful employment to um, individuals who are managing long-term addiction, mental illness, material poverty, from a particular neighborhood, the downtown east side, home of the term Skid Row. Mm. Um, and so we have uh, four different farms, uh, four plus acres of pavement. Uh, we grow, we produce 25 tons of food annually, um, all with the hands of folks who, you know, are uh, in most cases people would refer to as kind of the untouchables, you know, they're, um, uh, and so uh, the project has been going for almost 10 years. Um, we, um, uh, are you know, continuing to you know reinvent ourselves and try to inspire others to do what we're doing um, with the recognition that what happens in Vancouver socially climatically etc is of course unique to Vancouver people can take the model but they have to adapt it so. you told a great story before about one of the an individual who, who um, sort of I guess it was a great example of the of, of what can, the change that can be made in one's life from that situation and, and being involved in your your program there. Are you going to tell us? Yeah. About that? Well, I mean, there's been a lot of stories, um, and certainly when I started, my um, expectations were kept in check. You know, um, uh, and I have to say, it's been remarkable to see the power of growing food and providing uh, uh, you know, meaningful opportunity for people in changing their lives. I mean, uh, uh, you know, Kenny, who you know, was our first neighborhood farmer, told me he comes to work feeling miserable, leaves feeling relief and hope. Um, Lyle, who I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. um, you know, Lyle says, you know, where would I be without this job? Dead? in an alley shooting up or in a penitentiary, you know. Um, and you know, this is not somebody who um, has the space for, you know, too much drama. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he's a guy who was, uh, uh, you know, provided collection services for drug dealers, he robbed banks, and he survived the jump off the top of an 18-story building. So he's, he's someone who, um, you know, has, been at the bottom. You know? So um, Donna tells us, you know, uh, what's the use of being sober if you don't do something with your sobriety? You know, I, I love that line. You know? So there's been some great, you know, we don't, we're not in the business of getting people off of drugs. That's not our primary goal. Uh, surely we, we have, we hope that people will get well. But it's really simple what we do. We're providing a reason to get out of bed each day. That's all. You know. And the power of that, the power of soil, the power of fresh food, the power of working in a team uh, with living things, it's remarkable. I think there's a huge opportunity in Australia for your, that sort of program, whether it's just with, ur with, with, with urban people who aren't necessarily in, in those particular situations, or, and also particularly with those people who, who and there are some programs in Australia. Um, I know there's one in, in Sydney called Pocket City Farms. And, I know and, it, yeah. And you do know it, yeah, yeah I did, a, I taught a workshop, a day-long day master class there. In, Fantastic. Uh, March, yes. um, Michael, what are some of the hurdles you, you had and how did you overcome them? Just just as a, not, not necessarily a, yeah. a, a, you know, a how-to for people They're um, endless. watching, but yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> well, first of all, the scale of what, of what we're doing is significant, it's huge. And uh, access to land in an expensive city is, fun, is difficult. It was easier when we started than it is now. Uh, municipal codes do not address the kind of use that we're, we're doing. Uh, there's no such thing uh, that has existed within the city of Vancouver previously. So we're essentially 
having to push through and work within an existing um, uh, you know uh, legal system and zoning system that makes it incredibly expensive and difficult to do what we're doing I mean so we're having to navigate that um, uh, the people we work with are uh, both incredible and you know they're dealing on a day-to-day -day basis with challenges that many of us could never endure you know? Um, uh, you know they don't always show up for work you know they're um, uh, you know it's um, uh, we're operating a business but uh, it's not always a predictable um, labor force mm -hmm. so we have to we always have to be prepared for that the possibility the yeah. so, and tell me what are you, what what are your your sort of what were your go-to books or your go-to people your mentors your sort of who inspired you when you were getting into yeah. organic farm because you're an organic farm as well at, um, outside of Vancouver yeah I mean that's been my primary occupation for 43 years and first in California and then in British Columbia and uh, so yeah I mean I have uh, a number of mentors some known and some completely unknown you know um, uh, I was very lucky to become friends and have with some of my mentors people like Wendell Berry who I've known for a while and uh, uh, you know, Wes Jackson um, the Rodale family very inspiring um, uh, you know, I could go on. So I, um, I came up during a time when there, there were not a lot of books out there <laughs> about this, um, and uh, the movement was not what it is now. It's very different. I knew everyone in North America who was an organic farmer. Now, you know, that'd be impossible now. You know? um, and so we, we didn't have a lot of go-to. Uh, we had to really figure out a lot of stuff on our own and we made endless mistakes I mean agriculture is the result of 7,000 years of trial and error and, and if you stop if you're not willing to make those mistakes then, and that that was certainly the case for us I mean um, the numbers of crazy things that I did and stupid things I did uh, I, I couldn't the list would be too long to even repeat but those that's what informed my movement forward you yeah know? Um, so um, you know uh, and it's a different economy now you know for younger people to yeah. deal with I mean uh, housing costs and, you know, so you know people getting into farming now land costs you know it's a it's a big challenge a whole right? different range yeah. of problems right Michael well, what um, if people want to know more about you You've, got, you've published a number of books. Can you tell us, a, tell us, you know, um, give us a list of your books and where are you on social media? Like, you know, yeah. just where people want to know you because you're, you know, fascinating. I've been yeah. listening to you the last couple of days here at the Writers Festival. Um, so many sort of strings to your bow. And yeah. so, how can people know more about you? Give us well, well, your pump up your ties. Michael. I don't you're do so, man. I don't do social media. <laughs> okay. At all. Although Website. some people in our organization, I do have a couple websites. Uh, there is michaelableman.com, that's uh, A-B-L-E-M-A-N. Yes. Um, there's uh, soulfoodstreetfarms.com, so that's S-O-L-E, by the way. Yes. Uh, um, uh, and then our family farm, Fox Club, F-O-X-G-L-O-V-E, Fox Club Farm, B-C.com. Um, the books are, you know, still out there floating around. The yeah. recent one is Street Farm, Growing Food, Jobs, and Hope. On the urban frontier, um, uh, you know, fields of plenty, um, on good land, which was the story of the farm I ran in California, um, and from the good earth, you know, uh, uh, images from around the world, you know, so, farm, yeah. food and farming. You know, so, so uh, yeah, all that's that's still available. I'm not very, I'm not a very good. Uh, <laughs> Self-promoter. <laughs> uh, well, as, as long the, as I've been doing this, you'd I'll think I'd be you. better. But yes. I'll do it for you. Michael's actually in the country. Um, I know you've got some something on next week in Adelaide. Two uh, days in Adelaide, Tuesday and Wednesday. I, I've been told there's still a space or two, although yes. I think it's close to full. You know, sure. So, um, and then... Uh, the Bendigo uh, Writers Festival uh, next weekend. Wonderful. And also, and you do get to Australia sort of once or twice a year. Is that something that's in well, your program? I was Would here in March because yep. I did uh, public events in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, and then I was also here in uh, Mullumbimby, actually. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then it was seven, six, seven years before that that I was here. Uh, 
uh, also doing the same thing. So it seems like it's it's becoming more regular, and I'm That's happy about that. I love this country. Yeah. It reminds me of California 30 years ago, which uh, which I'm I lived in California. I love I love that. So. And that's a whole other topic, isn't it? You mentioned before about you know, I guess not keeping an eye and not spoiling places like you know Byron Bay and like keeping yeah. track of that. We love you too, Michael. Yeah, and thank love you so to, much. Yeah. Love to have met yeah. you, and yeah. um, we're so we're going to do whatever we can to get you back. All right. Yeah, I hope that happens. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.